Okay, day 142, the Awan Brotherhood, part one. I'd like to send this out to uh, Rob Schmidt at Fox News. So this is uh, Schmidt with two Ts and then NYC, uh, because he's based there, obviously. <clears throat> uh, he did a good article on the Awan Brothers, but I want to expand uh, the discussion uh, for the coverage that he gave. Um, one, I think it's important to establish the backdrop that Hillary had worked with Sin Blumenthal to contract with General Grange and Tyler Drumheller in a company called Osprey Global to work with Muslim Brotherhood to overthrow Gaddafi and, and Syria. That was in the emails from uh, Sid Blumenthal, the emails from uh, Tyler Drumheller, and some of the Hillary emails. <clears throat> so I think the you really can't discount the Mo Muslim Brotherhood connection here. Uh, the White House visas weren't mentioned, so I think I'm going to cover that as well. And I don't believe top secret access was mentioned in, in Rob's coverage today, so I'm going to mention that. And I'm going to mention the fact that these are foreign nationals with this kind of access, which I don't think came out in the coverage today. And also some of the events around the reporting for Andrew McCabe. Um, so the first thing that I want to add to Rob's coverage is the fact that this political, uh, this uh, True Pundit article that came out this morning that had two place sources amongst a meeting of about 12 different people, lots of witnesses, where uh, the assistant uh, deputy D deputy directory uh, attorney, uh, deputy FBI director, excuse me, had colorful language. He said, F. Flynn and then F. Trump. That's a direct quote from the article of uh, True Pundit's a well-known source, exclusive uh, political terror plot, uh, FBI secretly conspired to wage a coup against Flynn and Trump. Um, we know Andrew McCabe because he was the one who accepted $675,000 from Terry McAuliffe. He was the one who kind of sharded the, ex, uh, the um, investigation into Hillary's server and, and also sharded the uh, investigation into Huma's server. And we know Kallstrom, the previous assistant director of the SBI, FBI, talked about the investigation of Hillary and Huma's server and said, no grand juries, no subpoenas, no court owners, immunity for all the co-conspirators, letting all the co-conspirators interview together. These are all crazy things the FBI never does. So the other thing that wasn't mentioned in uh, Rob Schmidt's article was the fact that there was an external server. Uh, that's very key because that is very much like the Huma and Hillary situation. Also, it wasn't mentioned the actual committees that I realize Rob had limited time, but how, not only House Intelligence, but Homeland Security and Foreign Affairs. Homeland Security is important because if you did have a spy network, if Muslim Brotherhood did have a spy network and Andre Carson, who sits on these committees, has been receiving money from Muslim Brotherhood uh, leading organizations. Um, so it would be important to know, if, for instance, you could give early warning if, to your uh, spy network if you had, if you sat on the uh, Homeland Security Committee. You could give early warning to Muslim Brotherhood organizations overseas in 40 different countries uh, about drone strikes and so forth if you were uh, able to get to the House Select Intelligence information. Also the visas, the White House visas, that wasn't mentioned. The fourth brother also wasn't mentioned, which is Omar, and we're going to get to that with the White House visas. He met with an immigration lawyer. The other thing wasn't mentioned, Jackie Speer and Des Debbie Washington Schultz asked for top secret clearance. So not only did we just, th the story was presented like three Muslim brothers were trapping their stepmom in a house, and this was a, some kind of domestic issue. Um, I think it's important to your viewers, Rob, to clearly point out that these, that Jackie Spear asked for, on the behest of uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, for top secret uh, compartmentalized information. As I mentioned before, they, they mentioned that she was imprisoned in the house and they mentioned that she was hacked, but they failed to mention that the brothers fleed to Pakistan. And they, meant, they said uh, in the report, it appeared that the father had died. I'll challenge Rob uh, to find a death certificate in Virginia for uh, uh, Shah here, uh, for, for Shah Muhammad, for Muhammad Shah, excuse me. Now, I do find a Muhammad Shah in Pakistan, and I do have a connection from a dying court training contract to that uh, Pakistan police force, the PSP, created by the intelligence service of Pakistan. And I do have a long history of abuses by this organization, 
by all the ISA I created police organizations. And I also, what wasn't mentioned in the um, uh, report was the uh, Awan brothers connection to radical Islamic terrorism, lots of of radical clerics, lots of allusions to a terrorist group called SSP, which run, which has been known to run a, a drug rat line in Pakistan. The other thing that didn't come out in the Awan brothers reporting was that they made them out to be just contractors. Well, they weren't really contractors, <clears throat> you know, non-political contractors. They actually only worked for 31 different Democrats through Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So to characterize them as non-political uh, is is rather long odds that they would only work for 31 different Democratic uh, con- contractors. Greg Meeks was made out to be some kind of protector of Muslims. Uh, and if you look at the watchdog groups in Washington, D.C., like Crew, um, they don't talk about that as much as they talk about him being one of the most corrupt members of the con- of Congress. So uh, looking at the large amount of money, the, this amount of money, this $4 million to the Awans wasn't mentioned either in the reporting. Uh, another thing that got skipped in the reporting was the amount of money they actually made, $164,000, $165,000, $157,000, and, and their wives, two and a half times median. That didn't get uh, mentioned. Also, this nanoset technologies that they were involved in, the Awan brothers were involved in, well, they just had to be a government contractor that sells IT equipment. That's a government tr- contractor. So it'd be it would be odd to be a, a contractor making one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year for all these thirty one different congressmen, and then also have a company which they were officers in, which was selling the government um, IT gear. That would be an odd uh, conflict of interest. Also, not mentioned in the article was their two wives were involved uh, in uh, Congress as congressional staffers or contractors, whatever you want to say. And they also were making three times and four times the median. They didn't mention the car dealership, which was uh, usually known as a money laundering mechanism. And and Avalon Mortgage, uh, Hina Alvey's company, was not mentioned. So uh, a couple other things that didn't quite get brought out were that there was seemingly an endless uh, series of people staying at the house coming from Pakistan, experts that were experts, that military-trained hacking experts in uh, cyber warfare. And uh, so I think that is another thing that you might want to mention. Oh, it's interesting, you know, DISA here, I mentioned DISA, and I mentioned the... um, you, you know, the global information grid, and somebody said, oh, that's conspiracy theory. Uh, I didn't, I got this off their website. <laughs> I mean, I didn't put that out there. They did. That's their own, <laughs> that's their own graphic. Um, so, and, and the last thing is, uh, there was no context given to the uh, Awans and their, their connections with uh, terrorist groups, uh, uh, soft jihad or civilized jihad groups like the Gulen Group, which I'll cover more in future episodes. Um, they did mention that um, that there was a Hezbollah tie, but they did not mention the Gulist, the Gulen uh, terrorist ties. So they did mention that there was a, a Hezbollah connection, but uh, Rob did not mention this uh, terrorist ties and, and the the fact that uh, this guy was a kind of a, a, a shyster doctor uh, kind of. And, and I, I understand there's not a lot of time to report in a short segment, but but then. A couple of other troubling things are there is this doctor who's a, um, uh, she is a physician in Baltimore here at the VA Medical Clinic. Okay, so she's a very well-known doctor. She came from uh, Bangladesh. She was a well-known government figure in Bangladesh. She went to medical school in Bangladesh. Uh, but she was living for a time at with the Awans and went into businesses with the Awans. So this this is an odd mix of IT and medicine, which, so anyway, they she became, even as a doctor, became a, a chief technology for officer, for or chief executive officer, excuse me, for this nanoset technology. As you can see here, it's just a, uh, a condo. So I wonder how much business nanoset technologies did with the United States of America. That should be readily discoverable. And they also were involved in this thing called New Dawn Publishing or, or New Dawn, um, 
And uh, there's a Dawn Publishing that's very famous in Pakistan. And I'm just wondering if New Dawn was the American arm of that, but we don't know yet. We need to do more research. Um, I won't talk about the drug routes uh, from Pakistan through Turkey that have been traditional. This is called the Golden Route. And I won't talk about the fact that when that got blocked uh, with uh, Gulan and Erdogan falling out and this 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 route kind of falling to Erdogan, I won't talk about Gulan's extra routes that he tried to develop through these stands, all the stand countries here into Europe. That, so I won't mention that. I don't think that should color the, the earlier reporting, which is more fact-based, but there is motive here to uh, the, uh, the background. 